Hi right, guys, um, just going to talk today about um, difficult relationships, difficult people. In personal relationships, like for example, a partner, if it's unattainable and not going to work, assess it and then make a decision. You know, if you you need to speak to your partner about it and go you know things don't change this just ain't going to work or you know you need to work that out depending what the problems are because it could be i don't know her family always being in your house or it could be that she's manipulative and constantly devaluing you without you often not knowing um because i've seen that a lot in the last few years with a few people that have come out of relationships then realize what's been going on They've been slowly uh, whittled away at. Um, you've got to assess this. And one of the things, like I said, one of the things I do is I assess regularly, and this is this is one of the things that's important, is why is somebody doing something? If you've got somebody at work, for example, that's awkward. Um, for example, a miserable individual every day does nothing but moan and gripe and complain. That person has probably got a difficult home life or they're in a job that they're not qualified, skilled and experienced in. So they deflect. There's often a whole piece there that sort of says there's more going on. So when they're argumentative with you or just generally difficult, you can look back and think, so what is your problem? And when you look back and you know, like I said, when you look at it from that angle, you're not getting frustrated about um what they're trying to do you know because some of them will try and get you to argue try and get you a bite try and deflect something they haven't done onto you um but if you can sit there and go hmm the guy must have a difficult home life the woman must have a difficult home life um they haven't got a clue what they're doing but that becomes your advantage because you don't get frustrated by it you, you're taking their negative energy and recognize rather than going back with the same sort of tone and everything else just analyze it because if you know you know for example they haven't done something and spool out a load of nonsense just put a positive case together you know it showing well to be fair is it really that important but also i believe this was stuff you were dealing with but, you know, have a nice day. <laughs> Keep it positive. Don't get me wrong, you will frustrate them um, 100%. But you've done the important bit. They're not frustrating you. And if they're like that, it'll be very difficult to change them because their problem's not with you. It's stuff that that's going on with them. Um, but the whole point is not to get dragged into that stuff in a negative way. Um, it's not always easy and it's the same with uh, I've, I've had some friends that have been quite chirpy and they've had difficult home lives you know horrible wives <laughs> um, but at the same time they've kept a positive spin because it's almost like their work life was better than their home life so they were more positively focused because I think they were getting henpecked and all sorts of stuff going on at home and um, that when they come to work, it was a bit of respite. It didn't matter how bad the day was, it was better than home. Um, with those guys, sometimes I like to, you know, just let them vent and, you know, just how's things? What's going on? Everything okay? Any problems? And a lot of time I go, no. And then one day, you know, if it's too much, they may just boil over and just go, yeah, my wife's an absolute nightmare. Um, and then they know they can come to you. You've got, they've now got somebody they can confide in. Um, but, for this this conversation, the, those guys are normally in a positive trend, you know, at work, unless they're going to go home and do something um, to do others or themselves. <laughs> um, you can only be a support mechanism if they want it. Um, so they're not really problematic in your life work and because the thing is it's not just work i know where you're at college or you're going into high school or whatever you'll get people that are uh, wanting to create problems 
And like I said, there's often other stuff going on, whether it's peer pressure, whether it's um, they've come from a bad home life. Um, and it can be difficult to deal with because there's so many things going on. Um, and they, sometimes it is just worth trying to avoid them because I'm not one of these guys that uh, is into those whole hippie holistic thing where you go down there and it's go yeah he absolutely hates me wants to punch my face in but i'm sure we can find some friendship and hold hands some of these people are nuts um i know from my old school days there's a probably about three people i'd be surprised if they haven't gone to prison already because they were psycho at school you can't fix everything and not everything is your problem Sometimes it's worth avoiding those people if you can. Um, but ultimately, you can't fix everything. And don't assume that every problem needs to be fixed. Because, like I said, a lot of these are not yours to fix. What you want to get through is through the day without these problems um, becoming bigger. And a lot of time, you can reduce them or work your way through them. Um, so, I said, one of the ones you know you find in work life is people have got a lack of knowledge, experience overworked um stressed see stress and anxiety isn't a reason to target somebody else as far as i'm concerned i i see that is oh i'm stressed i'm allowed to be nasty to you no that's completely unacceptable because all you're doing is deflecting your stress onto other people not a good not a good way to be because you're not managing your stress so you're assuming you make everyone else's life miserable no, don't agree with that at all. And if you have got some of those people, they can be difficult to deal with. Um, but I would say have a look at how you can manage it. Because I know with the industries I work in, they don't take it well when you tell them. <laughs> because, you know, um, I remember Glenn, Glenn out in Oman, one of the things he used to say to some of his female managers out there, because, you know, he's a manager himself, is I'm not your husband. In other words, don't speak to me like I'm your husband. You know, if it, just treat me with the same respect I'm giving you. I'm not asking for much. And most of the time, they don't even have to engage with each other. This was even bizarre, but a lot of the time, it's often problems outside the workplace or things they don't know how to do or they know they don't have the knowledge to do it. And that's why, you, like I said, you focus on the reality. The, the inside knowledge piece is not seeing that they have an issue with you, but seeing they have an issue with something and it probably not relating to you. Now, don't get me wrong. If you're rubbish at your job, you already know. You don't have to ask. Um, but then you have to ask the question, are you doing the right job? Did they give you the right job? Have they changed your work? Because that happens to me a lot. You start off in one role and end up with about five because as people leave the businesses or the incompetence levels are so bad, you, you end up hoovering up the other stuff. At some point, you've got to stop. Um, for myself, like I said, the only focus is paying this building. Once this property's paid, I don't need to be working at this level anymore. I might even drop two two rungs down the ladder so I can focus on other stuff. Or I may just call it a day and just work online. Because like I said in the last video, everything's temporary. Um, but what if you do it getting bullied at work? Well, firstly, you don't have to accept it. Um, now, don't get me wrong, I understand if you're financially in a difficult situation you may be stuck there for a while. You know, for example, if they're locked, you're locked into some sort of uh, training program. But with training programs, there's normally a safety net for things like that. And I would say raise your hand on it. You don't have to put up with that crap. Nobody has to. Um, but if it's like, for example, I don't know, you're working at a pizza restaurant, you're working in a, in a garage or something where um, it's just a job, there's other jobs out there. Start looking. You know, it doesn't mean you have to quit today and go and get another job. Just start looking for another one. 
and you'll you'll find something else, and then you just jump ship. Nothing wrong with doing it. You know, if it's a bad working environment, do something about it. If your boss is harassing you, bullying you, whatever, like I said, if you want to train anything, do something about it. In a lot of the other cases, it's more difficult. Um, but either way, I wouldn't recommend putting up with it. I'd recommend making the changes. And sometimes, depending who the boss is, because it depends on their mentality, which you can only gauge by your knowledge of them. If you actually spoke to them, you know, they, this is what I'm saying, it depends on them. Because if they're workable, you might find that you speak to them and they take it on the chin because they didn't realize they're doing it. Because like I said, it could be having a crap home life. And then suddenly realize they're deflecting it on you and they may rein it in a bit because you're a valuable member of the staff or they feel like in a bad space now that you've raised it to them because they didn't notice because the, they start off the day angry with the wife go you know dropping off at the car i remember um this goes back this reminds me of um waiting for, i wasn't even driving at the time I, was, I just got picked up from the train station this guy was trying to reverse off his drive um, but we're stuck in the queue of traffic because of the traffic lights and it's like him and his girlfriend or wife were yelling at each other then he goes um he's then yelling at, at us you know move the car so i can get off the, the drive all this sort of stuff and i'm like no we'll just wait for the lights and he's you know and he's coming to the bottom of the drive and he's like oh, you know wanting to get in a fight and i'm like okay i'll just get out of the car i don't care you know you want to fight come over then but bear in mind, my tone's exactly the same. I'm not getting annoyed or whatever. And he didn't get off his drive. Because it's not me he's annoyed with. It's, it's his wife that's sitting in the in the passenger seat. <laughs> <coughs> um, and once we, you know, can move off, they come out, you know, wheel spun off. And uh the person that was driving the car says, you know what? They'll be arguing in the car now. She, he'll be shouting at her and you know he'll be going look you just nearly caused a fight and she'll be shouting at him going why are you arguing with that guy in the street blah 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 their day's ruined but didn't bother me in the slightest and all the guy had to do was wait for the traffic lights to change get out go to work five minutes earlier he wouldn't have been in that situation although arguing with his missus probably still be the same but the point being is what a way to start your day shouting and arguing with each other and you'll carry that through the day and this is what you remember with some of these people that's their every day you know I've had a few friends that were going through divorces over the years and they may not bring it up or tell you but there's certain things there that just you think they're not alright there's something not right um I remember being around a friend's house and I noticed there was no photos. Because um, he didn't tell me at the time. Because I think even the house was up for sale. Because they were, they were splitting up. But you, you notice things. And that's one of the things that is important in this. Because a lot of the stress, anxiety, pressure and other bits. In life. They are deflected or given from others one of the big problems this is this is for my own industry um, facilities management is riddled with ex military officers who like to bully and push and often have no clue how to run a business so their response is dump and run dump it on someone else and and run because they'll give it to them won't engage too much about it in the hope that that person doesn't fix it. If they don't, blame them, sack them, replace them. The problem is that whole model has been failing for 15, 20 years. However long Quillian was around because a lot of the officers were all um, the old boys club, boys network. Um, I mean, if you look at a lot of the businesses now, the, in the FM industry, you have a look at the directors and CEOs, etc., and you see how many of them are interwoven with the Ministry of Defence, with being ex-officers, and a lot of them are useless 
absolutely useless. They just talk waffle. Don't actually, they're non-productive. They wouldn't have uh, understanding how to deliver half the stuff supposed to. Hence, the whole industry is not in a good space. Unless it's actually on the professional mechanism in the sense of real companies rather than facilities management. You know, when I say real companies, you're talking about, uh, for example, uh, being managed and run by, say, an oil company, which isn't, you know, a facilities company. It's within the oil company itself. You'll find they run a, a lot better because even their recruitment is a lot more stringent because they don't want to end up with the same problems. Um, but anyway stepping back a bit the point being is there is always more to the problem than you often see and the main thing is to understand if you can't fix it move on you know if you, you know if the person's uh, unworkable and it's your work environment you can change jobs or you can switch off to it one of the two there's always a solution you don't have to keep in that position and keep with it for the next 20 years or whatever. And I'm not a fan of people that stay in the same jobs for years. I really aren't. You know, if you can manage it, good on you. For me, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I mean, bear in mind, I've been in Northampton recently for, what, three years now. I hate it. <laughs> it's not me. Um, and it's just because of the focus on the house. Because once that's gone, that's me out the door. Um, which is what we're whittling away at quite rapidly. That's that's where all the spare change goes. Um, so you've got to understand things can change, things can be altered, things can be made better. And the other thing is, whatever you do, learn from the experience. Don't go down the same route if you can. You know, if you know you instantly you don't, get on with somebody, you know, for example, you go for a job interview, a new job, and instantly you've got a dislike for the person because of whatever it is, you know, whether it could be there, you, you went there as a mechanic and they go, oh, well, you're, well, you'll be a mechanic, but also you've got to make the tea. Um, I expect you to work every weekend. I expect that. And it's like, hang on, this, was, this wasn't in there, the, uh, the information that was given about the job description because you're not paying for these things because for me when people start doing that they're going to keep feeding more for themselves in the sense of they may have been supposed to do every six weekends between however many staff you know you do one in six but then they get oh we'll get the new starters to it then we don't have to do it well if they're going to do that then you're going to start to see all the bits and pieces they dump on you and then you guys think, is the job worth that? Because if there's other jobs out there, there's alternatives. And it doesn't mean you have to work with a crap company and the crap crap individuals. There's always options. Um, but the reason I bring it up is because I know it's been, when I was working for um, a contract in Northampton, there's been pretty much, I don't know, at least 20 plus people have left there. And every single one of them has said they'd wish, wish they had left earlier. Um, myself included. You know, I, I was staying because of the, the house, but I should have actually gone as soon as it started going, spiraling downhill. Because um, I got the thing we're running, and then there was restructure 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 it's just a disaster all it was was penny pinching um reducing the number of staff but meant anybody that was still there was getting five times as much work and then there's all the false promise things are going to improve this one sort of bring out the, the fact is be very careful if that nonsense starts happening because it won't, it's very rare that they'll actually do the opposite and actually increase the staff until it's on the verge of collapse and losing the contract then suddenly they'll flood it with money and if they'd actually kept the same money in then they'd probably have maintained and retained the staff that were good in the first place but anyway um but things always get better but some of it is a case of recognizing 
some people are just nasty pieces of work and often it's stuff that's in their background nothing to do with you so it's not you causing it so you know don't blame yourself for a start because it's probably not you uh, maybe you I don't know you may be crap at your job but even then then they should actually retrain you help you or tell you to find another job not make your life hard because you know because sometimes people are rubbish at things <laughs> and let's be honest you know I I will never play in the NBA don't, it doesn't put a tear in my eye it's just a bit of a limited reality we're not all good at everything um and we're not all good at the careers we choose. You know, we may want to be something and then find that we have to reassess things because we're not who we thought we were. But it doesn't mean you have to give up. You may have to just change the direction. You know, it's like programming. You know, you may go, oh, well, I wanted to do programming, but I don't really get it. You may be better off learning skills around Excel or accounting or developing stuff in a different angle but it's still in a similar similar industry you know there's alternatives there's always solutions um, but that's all I can say on the subject really but the main thing is don't let anything grind you down if it's grinding you down assess it what is it who's causing it and change it in whatever it, whatever way it needs whether you need to leave, someone else needs to leave, raise a complaint, whatever needs to be done. But you should never feel that you're stuck in that position permanently. There's always alternatives. Thanks for watching.